Jamie Wilton. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, but it's perhaps pretty. Perhaps they were right. This is the best craftsmanship. But it is one. pretty Jamie Wilton. But this one, okay, you saw how the valve worked there, right? With the going in and out in the little hole, right? Okay. This one's interesting. There's no little valve moving in and out, right? Right. Okay. Um, I mean, it's kind of fun, but there's no little valve. But the piston's spinning up and down. See that? Yeah. Okay. So, and I'll have this setting up here later where you can come up and see. We'll take a break in, in a little while. But this is fun because these, whoa, 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 there with the piston, um, these two inlets are offset. One's here and one's here. So when this cams into this position, the bottom one lines up with the hole. And when it cams into this position, the top one lines up with the hole. So you get one hole lined up or the other. Does that make sense? Okay. It turns out that there's about 192,675 ways to make the valves to control steam engines. Because people have been Making playing them. with them for 200 years, almost. And so, um, so there's just no shortage. Not counting the Greeks. Um, and yes, yes, yes the, the piston has a big bunch of JV weld on it because I don't own a lathe. Yeah. And so the way I turned down the piston was to chuck it up in my electric drill and spin it against a file. Um, <laughs> and if you don't like that, life is hard. Well, um, I'm the guy whose lathe is a belt-driven lathe. And I ran out of, I broke my belt, so I went into the closet, got a belt, cut the buckle off, and crimped it on. So my you watch belt the driven holes lathe is by. really driven by a belt. I, 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 in a previous life, I was a machinist off and on for many years, and I have been in machine shops that had really old equipment, and I've never seen one of leather belts, but it's not uncommon even today to find uh, old style machine tools that are run on rubber belts. Yeah. Um, and it's the same principle. They just rubber last longer, but you can do them with leather. And the way st the way factories worked way back when typically was you'd have steam running through the whole thing, and then th th it would operate. Each a lot station, of machines. yeah. Each off station of, had its own belt. Yeah, off of belts basically. There, uh, there used to be uh, a leather belt driven. I can't remember what it was. It was some kind of machine tool. At Knott's Berry Farm. Oh, really? In California. I've yes. never, I've, I've, I've oh, never right. been, I've been to Disneyland several times. I just never got over to Knott's Berry Farm. Yeah. There's, the a couple thing about, them, there's a couple of them at uh, Greenfield Village. Yeah. The too. thing about belt driven machine tools that's a pain in the butt, first of all, the belts break. But the really big advantage to gears is that you can change them quickly, whereas if you want to change speeds of belts, it's you can do it, but I mean it's a slow, tedious process of having to disassemble stuff as you put well, the belts around it, and it slows you down. That's the big advantage of the gear driven is you can just do everything on my, my self bend is a 12 speed, and I've got a triple step pulley. I've got a back head that that halves it, and then I've got two step levels on the on the on the belt that feeds oh, the belt. Okay, blah 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 blah. blah, blah. blah. <laughs> Moving right along. Back to um, presentation. So, uh, this is going to go away for now. I promise it will be back out next year, though. Um, so, we didn't get, uh, yeah, that one is going on okay. the so, uh, on the section. Little tiny hole, right? To let the air out, right? Coupling. Yeah, coupling, yeah. yeah. Real high tech top, <laughs> okay? Uh, little hole. And um, now, Here's the other problem. I this runs on about a pound and a half of pressure. It's about all it takes. Yeah. This this uh, is a little. The holes are much smaller. You know that had that big piece of plastic co coat hanger with a big hole in it. Hole was almost the size of my little finger. A hole in this is about a sixteenth of an inch. This runs great on five pounds of pressure. My, my vacuum doesn't make that, and I didn't want to bring the compressor, okay? So, we're going to try. You couldn't find the air bubble. Huh? You couldn't find the you air bubble. You couldn't find the air bubble. Now, my, my neighbor, well, actually, my neighbor that has the air bubble um, yeah. was not home. 
they, they're gone for the weekend. So I couldn't bring one. Um, plus the car was getting full. Um, one thing you'll notice is that he changed the, uh, uh, the, the hose from suck to blow. Right. So, so we're no longer sucking. I'm no longer sucking, which will make him happy. Okay. That's more pressure. He just might have enough pressure. You can look at him. That's an optimist. That's an optimist. Okay. Um, so if I spin this, I get two or three spins. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. That's friction. We're the safe place to sit. Under the table, outside the room. <laughs> Oh well. No. It does whistle nicely. Okay. Yeah, it does. So, um, come on. Yeah, not quite enough pressure. Quite enough. Can you see that when I flip it this way, here, just a minute. When I flip it this way, one, two, three, and so and a half. Yeah. If I go that way, it just stops, right? Because going backwards against the pressure, it just stops. And going forwards against the pressure, it doesn't almost, quite have enough. If I had my compressor, we'd be all happy, but it needs just a tiny bit more air. So, yeah, or better bearing. Or a bigger yeah, boiler. Okay, or better craftsmanship. Yes, that would be the other comment. <laughs> now, um, if you had a bigger boiler, that's all. If you I had a bigger boiler, but um, boilers are bad. So, anyway. um, in fact, in the real world, um, the fact that boilers are bad. Um, and the fact that, for example, steamships on the steam boilers on the Mississippi fairly regularly blew up, killing hundreds of people. Um, and was fish. The reason we have organizations like Underwriters Laboratories, the and Walmart, OSHA, and Factory Mutual, um, and it's the reason that the Hartford Insurance Fund actually got started because the Hartford Insurance Fund was actually owned by a company called the Hartford Steam Boiler Company. You bet. And the fund was to ensure that anybody who bought a factory mutual approved boiler had insurance. <laughs> so, so changing away from steam because we could go there, we could spend an hour and I don't We could spend a week. We had a question here. Yeah, yeah. question. Just, it's just a comment. It's fine. Uh, I don't know why people are hassling and laughing at you. I'm with the government, and I consider that fine engineering. Right? <laughs> 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 Woohoo! It's got it's points. Right. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah, it sure does. Okay, um, so we're gonna move on. Um, so enough steam. What else we got weird? Um, okay, yeah, I, I wrote the wrong sentence here. It's not computers with no moving parts. It's computers with no electronics. Okay. If we're doing, because we're going to have moving parts, air or water mostly, um, if we're building, um, if we're in 1632, we brought computers with us. And they will last uh, some, for? I forget the exact count, but we did a census. Four, it's about 400, 500. Yeah, no, it's more. Okay, whatever. There's a census. <laughs> but, but that's it. There aren't any more, right? And there are tubes in old televisions and radios and jumper cars, radios, and there are probably. radios, there's tubes, there are transistors probably that organs. we can salvage yeah. out of all sorts of places. And we can make radios, we can make things, but how many can we make? You know, I mean, however many it is, there's an absolute limit because once we're run out, we've run out. And making new transistors is not easy making new integrated circuits not going to happen anytime in the foreseeable future. Um, or rather, uh, the foreseeable future being defined as the first decade after the Ring of Fire because I don't think that the series will ever get to 1640 because it, we're up to 1636 and we've been writing it for a decade. <laughs> so we've gone five years in the decade. Um, but. Um, <coughs> And it keeps slowing down because the series spreads out. So now we've got bits of the series in North America, and Ivers written Japanese stories, and we went to India. We went to India. Yeah, you guys went to India. They went to Russia. 
Eric's on the Eastern yeah. Front, and yeah. meanwhile, yeah. Chuck's keeping Central Europe going. So, well, we so, ended up in Trankabar because yeah. no, like Denmark, Italy, yeah. Italy, yeah. Italy, 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 Europe, and the Caribbean. Uh -huh. and, and the Caribbean. And the Caribbean, that's true. I forgot about that. So, so the point is, we started with this little West Virginia coal mining town, and we've now spread out, right? Um, there's this incredibly cool story that was in an early gazette called the Dalai Lama's Electric Buddha. And in that story, a pink plastic Buddha with a nightlight in it, little switch, turn it on and off, went hand to hand from a marketing grant bill to the Dalai Lama. And, you know, and the guy that presented it to the Dalai Lama said, yes, you know, if you move the little thing at the bottom, it lights up and it did and everybody goes, ooh. And, and the Dalai Lama said, well, you know, what causes that to happen? And the guy said, well, you should turn it off because we're told that, you know, if you leave it on very long, it will eventually wear out and won't light up anymore. Um, well, what's the issue? Oh, well, we think there's some sort of prana energy <laughs> stored in the bottom. Oh, well, that's probably why it's heavy. <laughs> okay, so we'll give it to the yogis and see if they can figure out how to recharge it. It's a great story, okay? Um, they probably can. All 995 words of it. Yeah, yeah, very short, less than a thousand words. But And uh, so in my next story, the emissary from the Dalai Lama shows up in your but anyway, um, <laughs> looking for more prana. I'll keep, keep for more prana. Give him a screwdriver. Yeah. Um, so, but so, so we have this absolute restriction, right? There's only so much electronics. Even tubes turn out to be a lot harder to make than you might think. Tubes are not light bulbs. Okay. Light bulbs are how hard many enough. You know what's inside a light bulb besides the filament? Nothing. Well, That's wrong. Gas. Huh? A bunch of gas. Yeah. It's an yeah. inert gas, yeah, yeah, right? Mostly argon. argon. Yeah. Mostly yeah. argon, but the point is it's an inert gas. Light bulbs are not vacuums. Okay? The very, very earliest light bulbs were vacuums, but that stopped within poof time of making the first light bulbs because, because two problems. First, in a vacuum, the filament just evaporates and ends up plating the inside of the bulb. And so if you've got a gas in there, it kind of holds the filament on. And the second problem was vacuum bulbs, when you break them, they implode. And it's a mess. So they don't do that. So vacuum tubes, which require really good vacuums, are really hard to make. Okay, just take my word for it. Really, really hard to make. So we can't make vacuum tubes anytime soon. They're working on it. Can't make transistors anytime soon. Certainly can't make any great circuits, right? But all of the downtimers have seen handheld calculators, they've seen computers, they've seen all this technology, and they want it. Okay? And Babbage engines never worked in the real world. You know? I mean, the, in, the British Science Museum recently built a, a, a copy from the plans of Babbage's difference engine. Not the analytical engine, but the difference engine. And it took them using modern technology machining only to Victorian standards, but using modern technology took them five years to get it running. And it was England. And that's the simpler one. That's the difference engine. Babbage's analytical engine the